All right, welcome everybody. Chris Petrie here. Let's get started. We're going to work from imagination. This is a real fun exercise. This is real, um, just uh, something you can do uh, spur of the moment if you just do want to do a quick, you know, 10, 15 minute drawing and painting. So there's not a lot involved. You don't have to set anything up. Uh, you don't have to worry about going through the internet searching for things or books or magazines, whatever it is. You can just basically take one uh, subject matter, let's say, let's we're going to use um, a uh, clay pot with some wildflowers in there. So that'll be our starting point. We'll have that in our picture. And so what I'll do is I'll start with that idea and we'll just go from there. So we'll, we'll maybe put a table, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get our ideas going here, but let's start out. Um, with that one idea of a clay pot and um, some wildflowers there, you know, some uh, maybe some Queen Anne's lace, maybe a little bit of some wild grasses and things, maybe a couple um, eucalyptus leaves or some, uh, you know, different, uh, maybe uh, whatever you want to do for your flowers, that's fine. I'm just going to make it a real loose, um, kind of like wildflowers in, in, a, in a clay pot. So I guess the main thing I would kind of want to key in on here is let's make the clay pot let's make the clay pot a good good size. Let's do this. Okay. So yeah, we're making it a, a good size clay pot in our rectangle here. So we have our rectangle, and this is about a five by seven paper. So the clay pot's going to be real simple, nothing fancy. It's one of those uh, clay pots, no no fancy tr um, decorative things on it, just a simple, simple design. Okay, now we're going to go from here. Now you could have a picture of a, a vase and some flowers, and that's your starting point. So you just start from there, you, you have that, and then you will draw that. So I'm just going to... I might have a picture in front of me. And then if I have some flower shapes that are very fine. So if you find that you have some wildflowers or certain types of um, uh, flowers that are very, very delicate and have a lot of detail in them, leave them very simple and then you paint in your details when, you, when you're painting. So I wouldn't go and draw a lot, a lot of details. I would kind of keep it simple. So I'm just going to talk out loud now here. I'm contour drawing so I have some leaves and some stems and And again, if I have a very delicate um, flower with tons of details, I'm just going to make it the overall shape of it. And then from there, we'll paint in the details. We'll splash in some details, whatever it takes. But again, the thing is to avoid too much details with our pencil drawing. We'll try to capture our details with our painting if we can. And now here, there's some quite a bit of stems and things. So I'm just going to leave it loose there. Then there's another flower shape here. There's a dark in the center there. There's some darker. Some dark in within the flower, center of the flower. That flower's more in a profile position. This one here is pretty. And some darker darks in there. So I'll shadow in a little bit of darks like that. So as you can see, I'm just building the flower shapes. And I'm not getting too, too worried about exact details. And there we go, another stem. So we have some stems kind of that 
that looks good. So most of the details we'll, we'll paint in with our brush, so we're not going to get too overly concerned with drawing everything we're seeing in our... So if you have a bouquet of flowers that you're going to find online or in a book, magazine, so forth, or if you have something uh, in your um, place that you have that you can just use, that you might have some uh, silk flowers you can use. Silk flowers are great too. I've, I've worked with those many years. I have purchased a lot of silk flowers and then I just put them into you know vases when I want to do a quick flower painting. They look really good. I got the best ones I could find. I uh, over the years have you know have shopped around at different places, uh, big box stores and so forth, or online. I've ordered some here and there, and sometimes you'll notice that some of the silk flowers look a lot better than others. So it's kind of like a find the best ones you can. Okay, so now we've got our flower pot, or some wildflowers here. So we're keeping this simple. We're going to do a table. And again, we're going to keep this simple. I'm just going to make a very straightforward table like that. Then there's a, the under rails of the table. And then we have the leg of the table there. Okay, and then Maybe here we're going to have some drapes behind. So we'll just make some shapes of some drapes here. And then maybe there's a window over here. So we'll, we'll make the um, indication of a window. And we'll keep this abstract. So we won't go into a lot of detail. We're just going to make the rectangle shape of the window here. And that's pretty much how we have a, a rough, uh, you know, working from your imagination. You can put in a couple of things. Once you get your flower pot in, then you can go from there and you say, all right, I got my flower pot in there with some flowers, some wildflowers. You can put any type of flowers in here you want. You can just create your own bouquet with some favorite flowers you might like. You can paint them in. You don't necessarily have to draw every detail, of course. Yeah, like we were saying here, you, we're trying to uh, keep it l loose with our drawing here. And then once you get that flower pot in and some flowers, then you just build from there and you say, okay, well, I'm going to have a table. So we get that in. And then maybe a window over here. I keep it to the side so that this kind of stays... Um, on its own, sort of like isolated in a sense, like we're tying everything together, but the flowers are here, the flower pot is here, sitting upon the table, and that's kind of like the focal point, and then the window's here to the side. You could also put the window behind, or some more curtains, there could be another window to the left here, but we'll just kind of keep it simple here. I'm just going to go with my window, just a couple lines. Okay, so I think this is pretty good. We have we have all that we need on here for our ide ideas of um, the main composition. And let's uh, take a quick break. We'll come right back. Now's a great time. I always like to mention, um, please consider subscribing. We're creating videos like this every week. We're doing flower paintings, seascapes, landscapes. We do figure painting. We do ink and wash. We do all kinds of interesting things. Everything watercolor, water-based media on my channel. So if you want, um, when you hit that subscribe button, you'll just be notified when our new video comes out. And we usually do at least two or three a week. Um, if I'm super busy, I'll at least get to one a week. But you'll always have them coming in each week. And you can work on ones that you like. And if there's paintings that you're not so much interested in, you can just, you know, you'll be alerted every time a new video comes out. So you'll know there's another one. And it might be something different that you like, you know. Uh, that you want to work on. So you're not, you might not see videos you like to work on every time, but I will mix up my uh, uh, compositions and my paintings so that you kind of get a feel for all different types of um, subject matter. So you're not just kind of locked into one uh, subject. You'll, you'll have many things to work on and you can work on as many or as a few as you like. And if you're a beginner, I just mentioned you might try just one or two at first. So you pick out your favorite subject matter that you like to paint and draw. And then from there, you can go, you know, you can start working on those. And then once you kind of get the feel for those, then you can work into other things. Like some people like to start with flowers and people would like to also usually start with like uh, landscapes, 
landscapes and flowers are probably the two most favorites that people like on my channel that I've noticed according to um, views of my videos. And then, but there's other things I do too, like figure painting and ink and washes also are very popular. So you just, you work on what you like, have fun and enjoy. And we'll be right back. We're just going to take a quick break and we'll work into our paints next and get our, our painting started. Okay, we're back and we're getting started here. We're going to do our painting. And I always like to, when I come back um, after a quick break, I'd like to just look at things and say, you know, do I think of anything here? Uh, anything can I do that, that would make it a little bit more interesting? And I, I thought this might be better. Uh, another leg under the table here to make it look a little more um, balanced. So, I'll, so this would be a smaller table, let's say. And then... Um, Other than that, I think everything looks good. I think we can start painting. I'm going to use a uh, Da Vinci 5 travel brush. It's Kalinsky, you know, Kalinsky uh, sable hair brush, watercolor brush, round. And then also a Raphael brush, uh, number 6. Um, Kalinsky sable, and it's um, a good, really nice brush, so it's just, you know, a good deal larger than the the five on the Da Vinci um, travel brush. And I'll also use a uh, needlepoint brush. Alvaro Kassinets, uh brushes he has on his website. And so th with these three brushes we'll pretty much have everything. Th that'll be all we need to really create this uh, entire painting here. So I'll start out with the number five and I'm going to start with the darkest darks. So darkest darks would be French ultramarine blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna, sap green too as well. Some people use sponges, um, sponges or uh, paper towels or tissues to uh, check off a little bit of water on the brush. I like to do that too as well. My apron I use as well. I wear an apron while I'm working here. And uh, so I'll start working in some of the darks. And we'll do this a la prima. Lights coming from the window here, so we're going to say the light's coming this way, and just so we make sure we're, if we need to at a glance, take a quick look at the diagram where we put our light at the top of our picture on the tape. And there's some lizard and crimson. So that's lizard and crimson mixed in with a little bit of the dark here and there. A little bit of cerulean blue over here. straight paint with just a touch of water. I check off some of my water all the time after I rinse my brush. And we could keep working our way around. We'll use some raw umber as well. Here I'm, I'm going to do some stems, stem shapes, some darks too as well. <clears throat> A 
<clears throat> there's some darks in here in the center of that flower. I'll use my needlepoint brush here. This one's this flower's got some really fine shapes to it, so I'll, I'll do that. And then there's some more petals here. A really good thing to do is if you can, try to remember to um, you'll see me do this often. I think everyone, if you follow me on a regular basis, you probably already kind of know this, but just for anybody that's new or maybe hasn't been following me for a long time, I always try to keep my um, painting and drawing um, in close proximity to where I'm working. So I'm not going to start here and then go over and do something up here. I'll start here and then just c try to keep working my way out from the center or wherever I start. So if I start a painting in the center like this, I'll just keep working from the center and keep working my way outwards and then downwards and outwards from the center of where I'm starting. So that's a good thing to remember. It helps to kind of keep um, things a little more organized when you're painting in your thought processes and the mixing of your colors. And then you can also, um, it helps with, um, It helps with um, if you want to take a break or take a break and then like come back a day or two later. I think it's easier to start back up working on a painting if you're kind of keeping everything close with your work and your painting. Okay, so now we have some more olive green, cadmium lemon yellow. So I'll make more of a brighter green here, greenish yellow. It's a little bit darker in the center there. And then the same thing, we have some darks here. And that's just a very fine flower. So I'm trying to get some of that So sap green, raw umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of, and I'm just going to try to do a few of the stems. Can also So now I'll start working some of these stems outward here. Some of them are have a reddish alizarin crimson. And 
There we go. We could take some of that bright green and mix that with the red. Okay, let's take another break and uh, we'll come right back. We're just going to let this dry up a little bit and then we'll uh, start back up. Okay, we're picking back up again. Let's uh, take a look quick. I noticed when I just was walking back up to my uh, table here, sometimes you'll notice when you're painting, you might have an issue where um, you might pencil in something and draw something in and it doesn't quite um, uh, match up to what you've drawn in another section of your painting. So I noticed here I did draw in this uh, stem shape over here on the right and the vase down here, the clay pot that we have is a little bit to the left. So this doesn't sort of make sense if that if that uh, shows like if you can see this on the the stem would actually be going down into the to the uh, clay pot. So when this happens, it's not a problem. You can sometimes, you know, you could we could fix this in a couple different ways. We could. The last thing we would probably want to do is add white to change this, uh, adding white paint to kind of um, go over this line that we made, this stem over here. The best thing to do is just lift up a quick line and we'll just make our, our clay pot a little larger, our vase. So that's all. So I'll just make it a little bit, the vase a little wider like that. And then now it, it lines up with, um, with the uh, vase below. That happens once in a while. So that's just a quick fix. You can make something a little larger or, or shrink it down a little bit. Sometimes you might need to shrink things down or make things wider. Like in your when you're drawing and painting as it's going, it's a process. You'll just notice that. It's a process. You're going to go and you're going to maybe see a few things you might need to adjust. And you just try to make your adjustments the best way you think is going to look good uh, for the finished painting. So now that we did that, we're back... Uh, Back again painting and maybe we'll start doing our clay pot. So we'll use maybe some cadmium red and um, maybe a little bit of yellow ochre. A little bit of orange. And then maybe a little bit of green just to gray it down a little bit. A little bit of... Uh, That was um, Viridian Green. And I'll splash. It's a clay pot, <clears throat> so it's uh, got some interesting weathered look to it. And we can just splash a little bit too. It's kind of got that stone, like stone feel, gravel feel to it. A little bit of uh, blue, maybe, too, as well. A little bit of cool and warm, warm and cool. So we'll put some warm and cool in there. Maybe the bottom of the pot is a little cooler. So we'll do that. We'll make the bottom of the pot a little cooler here. Make it interesting. With that feel. The light's coming from this window here, so that... We can keep we can keep things on this uh, right side over here a little bit uh, a little cooler and in, in shadow maybe. Okay, that looks pretty good. And maybe we'll start doing our table. 
probably what I want to do is I want to finish, I think I want to finish the flowers first in this bouquet. And um, again, too, I went over this. This was supposed to be the edge of the flower pot here. I drew in some curtains over here on the left, and then I noticed I went over my line a little bit again, not a problem. We're having just fun here. It's just a composition and a painting, so we can, we don't have to worry too much. Okay, let's finish up our flowers over here. So now these are very light and very fine. They have those little tiny flower shapes. So I can dab a little bit. We can use some blue. Like that. And then we can take some green. And we're going to do some flowers, some more uh, leaves here. There's some leaf forms. And a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue. We have some and then again we have some more of these Very, very fine, tiny uh, flower petals on this. So we'll just tap on these, tap on there a little bit just to get some of those flower petals, those tiny flower petal shapes. And then we can just, there's more stems. We can add in a few more stems here and there. That's looking pretty good. And then some more alizarin uh, crimson with some green mixed into that too as well. And we'll do some more of these shapes over here. You can uh, create your own flower shapes if you want. It doesn't have to be exactly um, what's in your picture. If you're working from a picture or so forth, you can kind of create some ideas on your own. You know, you can make some flower shapes that might have some berries and things like that so you can especially if you're going to do this for practice if you're just going to do this to sort of uh, warm up if you're doing another painting and you want to warm up and do some uh, just some fun exercises these are great to do you can kind of create your own make believe flowers or whatever in this way you know it frees you up a little bit so that you don't feel as uh, controlled and uh, as serious if you're going in to do like a, a finished painting, let's say, or more of a studio painting, something larger. If you're going to do that, you can do one of these paintings first, and it kind of helps you to loosen up a little bit, you know, and you can find some ideas as you do something like this type of uh, painting.
then I can work around and here there's a little bit of a little bit of a shadow there so I'll just try to that shadow there all right now I'm gonna try to do the tape let's do the table so we'll use some burnt umber burnt sienna raw umber that we just added there and then a little bit of cerulean blue as well and we'll just kind of pick up some of those colors and we're gonna do the table and let's just go right across like so then we can go in and infuse a few little bits of uh, cerulean blue in there you can add in a little bit of uh, repeating colors you can add in some red some of those are in crimson. And we'll continue here. We'll do some more raw umber. And again, I'll just go straight across. This will be a little darker under there. And if you have too much paint, you can always take some darker paint and go over top like that. And we'll just keep working our the legs of the table here. And I'm just thinking out loud. I'm I'm just putting the um, legs of the table on now, painting them in. And again, we can infuse some different colors here and there just to make it look a little bit interesting. It tends to be a little darker under this portion there. And loosen up a little bit, a couple splashes. Okay, that looks good. We can also bring a little bit of that mixture that we used here into the vase. Very subtly, but it will look good. It'll look like it's sort of more blending together, the table and the vase. So all that is is just taking a little bit of that color, just a tiny bit, and, and putting a little bit of that wash onto that vase. And then it'll kind of seem like it's flowing together, the vase and the table, which is more of a pleasing look than that hard edge of the colors of the vase or the clay pot with the table being totally different. We just add some of that uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna into the flower pot like that and it kind of just uh, makes a pleasing uh, transition from the table back and forth through the painting. And now we're at the, we're at the point now where we can start using a, a larger brush. We'll start doing just some of the wall a little bit of wash on the walls. Um, we'll also probably we'll paint in this window area, but th the rest of the washes are going to be pretty simple. We're not going to get too um, fancy with the with the background. We're going to try to keep that a little bit simple. So what I'll do is we'll take a break. We'll let this dry. That's a, a key here is letting this completely dry 100% before we go in and do this background now because. If we try to go in and do the background while this is still damp, especially the table and the flower pot, does that make sense? Then it's going to sort of, it might um, cause a problem with um, 
things ballooning out and washes kind of just overlapping each other and getting all uh, mixed uh, mixed up and stuff. So that rather than create a problem for ourselves, it's more it's easier to let things dry and then do other washes, subsequent washes. Once you like, if you're if you've been painting many many years, you, you have a feel for it by now. But if you're a newer painter with watercolors, it's sort of like a it helped me a lot. I'll, you know, I share with what I know. My knowledge is when I was first starting and maybe my first five or six or seven years of watercolor painting, I always kind of felt like I always let things dry a little more versus taking a chance and painting when things were a lot, you know, wet on the paper. When I was, when I was doing different things, you know, trying to blend in backgrounds with the uh, subject matter, um, you know, so forth. So if you're kind of newer to watercolors or you're still still in that learning phase where it's always better to let things dry versus um, to continue working while things are wet, very wet on the paper. You'll notice that it might work better for you, but you try it out, you see how you like it. Maybe you want to blend more colors and paints in your paintings. You might have a different technique or kind of a spin off of what I'm doing. You might have something a little different you're doing. That's fine too. I just offer my ideas and then you can, you can use those to uh, incorporate into your, your techniques and your style. But, um, just a little thing to remember is, you know, it's sometimes it's a little bit easier if you let things dry a little bit in your painting. Taking breaks actually helps that uh, that process too. When you take breaks, then you'll tend to um, things will dry for you a little bit more, and you'll be able to um, have an easier time with things, uh, the washes uh, as you as you go. Okay, we'll be right back in a great time. I always mention, hey, hit that subscribe button. Um, we're making videos again all the time. Every week you'll be alerted if you hit the subscribe button below. Uh, you'll be alerted that we're making a new painting. You can check it out. If you like it, you can uh, try it out. And if you want to wait till the next video comes out as well, you can do that. You can wait till we have another video that might be more uh, something that you like more. Maybe you like boats and landscapes, so maybe flowers aren't your favorite. So you can always pick and choose which uh, videos you like and work on those uh, projects. And uh, we'll see you in just a few seconds. Okay, we're back and we're going to start painting in our background now. So basically we um, cut our, we did our flowers, our flower shapes. We have our vase completed, our table. So now we're gonna work on uh, some of the draperies here, the window and the wall color. Let's keep this simple. We're pretty much, uh, this is a, a painting where we can keep the background pretty simple on this because we have a lot of detail in the flowers. So let's do that. Let's keep this background very, very simple. You know, almost abstracty looking, you know, not too much detail. So how are we gonna do it? Let's uh, work on it and we'll kind of discover it as we go. Again, this is more of a free style painting. You know, we're having a good time. We're not uh, getting too worried about all the details of everything. We're just trying to have a solid uh, composition with the flowers on a table, some background, and then we, you know, had some fun with our our painting and our drawing. And I'm going to just uh, clean the palette here a little bit. That's always good to do. Um, we uh, we have. We recall the paint colors we use, so we're going to repeat those when we do the background. What I'm thinking is a really good combination for background color, I think is going to be cerulean blue. We'll pick up a little bit of that green there. You can kind of see if we have some raw umber, cerulean blue. There's a little bit of the green we'll mix in there, just a touch of the green. That would look pretty good. And some more raw umber, some raw sienna over here. I think if we keep the background sort of this kind of a look, we, we should be good. Maybe a little bit of cobalt blue for the window. Now we'll use some purple too. That always is a good um, color with uh, sunlight. 
So what I'll do is I'll go in and just do a little bit of A little bit of purple in the uh, and here what I do is I, I add some purple wash carefully in the center areas of the vase in the table but I don't I don't bring that purple to the edges because when we do our background wash this is all dry now the edges of the table is all dry so if you can imagine these edges right here are all dry. So now when we go in and do our background, it's not going to, uh, you know, um, cauliflower out and blossom out with blooms of paint because it is dry. But when I'm adding in this purple, I'm adding in that purple in the center areas, and that won't that won't give us any issue. And then here we can add some purple. purple there as well. Okay, now we're going to So I'm just going to carefully do that. This is Fabriana rough paper, so you're going to get that nice rough, um, you know, very sheer looking um, curtains when you when you have the um, so I'm going to add the purple also to that quickly while that's still wet the paper. I'm going to go in and mix some more of that blue. And maybe we'll go with some French ultramarine, raw umber. Can be the windows. the bottom moldings on the window. And maybe we'll go with some little bit of wash under here. a little bit of wash over here on the wall. I want to keep some white paper though. I think that white that white paper looks good. And again the uh, a little bit of raw sienna for the walls. Maybe it's but I would definitely still leave and I would add in just a little bit of purple too. To the, uh, and if you see any puddles of paint, you can just blot them up really easy, if like over these areas where the flowers are, so that the flowers don't get uh, reactivated and then 
that can be a problem. Now we will, we'll let this again, we'll let this completely dry. Um, that's, that's important, let this dry. Maybe we can add some shadowing. Over here a little bit. I think that looks pretty good. So let's uh, let this dry completely. Again, maybe a 15, 20 minute break. And then we can come back and just maybe a few more um, shadowing, some shadow effects, maybe a little more shadow effects here and there. But I think this is pretty good. Um, I might just do a few touch ups in the flowers, but we'll have to let this completely dry before we do that. So let's let this dry again, 15, 20 minutes. We'll come back, or we can also use a blow dryer and do a little quicker process, and then uh, we should be fine.